We have more for your ears only. With Eddie Robinson, I'm David Alpern, and this quote from last week's news. Nobody knows what special status means. That was an anonymous advisor to Ukraine President Petro Poroshenko about rights granted areas controlled by pro-Russian separatists under terms of a ceasefire negotiated with Moscow. But it seemed to be holding as 70 percent of Russian forces withdrew and promised U.S. military aid was reportedly stalled while new Western sanctions were authorized. Now this segment from our July 21st, 2013 broadcast. I think George Zimmerman is a man whose heart was in the right place, but just got displaced by the, the vandalism in the neighborhoods and wanting to catch these people so badly that he went above and beyond what he really should have done. George had a right to protect himself at that point. Trayvon Martin could have been me uh, 35 years ago. George Zimmerman may not have seemed totally innocent to Sanford, Florida, juror B-37, but under the law of self-defense, she joined the unanimous verdict of not guilty on charges of second-degree murder or manslaughter in the fatal shooting of unarmed black teen Trayvon Martin. That produced a week of demonstrations around the country, calls for a Justice Department civil rights suit, repeal of state stand-by-your-ground laws, and an unusually personal comment by President Barack Obama. He urged greater understanding of the black perspective after generations of racial prejudice that he admitted was still a fact of life, though steadily fading. To put the verdict in reaction and context, as he did originally when the case first drew national attention, for your ears only, we're joined again by Ellis Coase, author of The End of Anger, Colorblind, The Rage of a Privileged Class, and eight more books on race and other social issues. What was your first reaction to the verdict? Well, I guess I had two. I mean, I was saddened, but I was not surprised. I never expected that Zimmerman would be convicted. Some say the all-female, mostly white jury could not identify emotionally with Trayvon. Others say it was more that the law of self-defense just doesn't account for who begins a confrontation, only whether any party to it can prove fear for his life. What's your view? Well, I think there were several gaps here. I mean, there's a gap between what most people, many people consider wrong and when what the state of Florida and, and other states would have these laws says is illegal. And I think it's absolutely right that under the law, it doesn't really matter what Zimmerman did, that he, in, in by many calculations, provoked this incident and then shot a guy who was only responding to him. What matters is that the law says that he was justified in doing what he did by any sort of logical reading. And, but I think at the same time, what, what, what the uh, president spoke to, I guess, in his remarks, uh, is that there is a huge gap between what many African Americans perceive and what many white Americans perceive. And this is not new. I mean, the, the, when Gallup did his poll last year, they found 51% of blacks saying that Zimmerman was definitely guilty and 11% of whites saying that he was definitely guilty. The vast majority, or the majority at least, of whites were saying that it was unclear who was wrong and who was right in this case. And at the end of the day, I'm not sure that even a jury that was half white and half black would have convicted him. I suspect they would not have because they were instructed to follow the law, not to follow what they thought was right. The original protests were to force a trial after cops just let Zimmerman go. Some say the extensive proceedings did honor Martin's death and that a civil suit plus endless fear of revenge may be punishment enough for Zimmerman. Others demand a Justice Department civil rights case, though it might be even harder to win. What do you think? Well, I think several things. I mean, I think, one, there are lots of people who, are, who want justice in this case. And there's a distinction in what we perceive as justice and in, in what the law permits to happen in certain situations. And I don't think that the honoring of Trayvon Martin is going to happen through the justice system. I think it's going to be very, very difficult to bring a, a civil rights suit here. I mean, I'm, I'm not a lawyer, but I, I happen to have... Um, dinner with Ted Shaw, the um, former head of the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund, a couple of days after this verdict came out, and we were talking about it, and, and, he, and he said basically the same thing. It's going to be a very difficult civil rights suit if they do, in fact, decide uh, to bring one. And uh, they can certainly be a civil suit, which has a, uh, a lower bar, and they may meet that. But um, 
least the legal system, is not about honoring Trayvon Martin. Uh, that has to happen in the political system, in the society, in, in the sort of social interactions of people. Some thought Obama's comments were right on about race and prejudice, even against a black man on a path to the presidency. Uh, others thought that they were too racially one-sided and provocative as the controversy continues. What was your reaction? Well, it's an interesting commentary on America and our experiences. The fact of the matter is that our experience with race in America tends to be one-sided. Um, Obama talked in quite personal terms about his experience of being followed around in, in, in a store or a shop and, and other similar experiences like that. Uh, I have, I've had that same experience when I was a kid uh, looking to buy my mom a birthday gift. I went into a store called Marshall Fields in Chicago, and I could not shake a, a store detective. This, this, is, this is not the kind of experience that most whites have. And so there's and so there's very little identification with that. And when someone like Obama or anyone else, for that matter, brings it up, there's a sense among many white Americans that he's playing some kind of race card and that he's bringing that, he, that he's injecting race in, into an area where it does not belong. What's been your reaction to the talk about warnings that loving black parents have to give to their male teens even today? It is a reality that I've talked with uh, with lots of black parents, and I and I wrote a book about being about young black men. So I'm certainly very aware. Of of the situation with them. And there is a sense that in many situations that could be read ambiguously, young black men are going to be looked at with suspicion. I don't think that most are going to be, in effect, hunted down and shot. But there is this fear and there is this concern of how you act in these circumstances where innocent acts can be perceived not so innocently. And, and there is Unfortunately, in, in this country, which has gone so far along the road of getting rid of racism, there are still some unfortunate racial stereotypes that slap black men in the face. Ellis Coase is the author of The End of Anger, Colorblind, The Rage of a Privileged Class, and eight more books on race and other social issues. From our July 21st, 2013 broadcast, now this quote from last week's news. Civil disobedience does cause inconvenience, a small sacrifice. That was Eric Vickers, chief organizer of the highway blockade to protest a white policeman's fatal shooting of unarmed black teen Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. Also last week, a city council meeting there was disrupted by citizens hooting at several post-shooting law enforcement reforms as inadequate. Two new white witnesses said they saw Brown shot with his hands up. Next, autism, Rain Man and reality for your ears only.